see Carl's Carl's in. We've got Hope in. Hey, Carl. Hey, Hope. All right, we'll give everyone just a few minutes to log in, get get set up, get ready to hear from our friend Matt Abels. Matt, thanks for being here today, man. Yeah, happy. Thanks for having me. Awesome. See some familiar faces and the participants uh, who are coming in now. Thank you all for joining. Matt and I will get going in just a second here. Matt, while we're kind of waiting for everyone to sign in, yeah, um, you mind sharing kind of where where you're quarantined, how you're holding up? <laughs> it, you know, it's. Uh... You know, just uh, quarantine in general, being downtown, the, the suburbs is much more appealing with, uh, with a 20-month-old. So it's been interesting. At, at 20 months, uh, I feel like my, my little guy's trying to just hurt himself every three steps. So got me on my toes. So, so, yeah, so I'm in downtown Chicago, and Matt is in the suburbs of Chicago. Normally, we would do this in person. Um, kind of a bummer that we can. This would maybe post quarantine, post COVID, we can get together and have a more formal conversation together. Um, but, but yeah, well, cool, Matt. So, you know, as we're waiting for more people to sign in, um, I think we're all pretty excited to hear from you and specifically hear about your new role. Congratulations on, on uh, signing on with the ABC and being the VP of construction tech. Um, very, very exciting to hear you're back in the industry. <laughs> um, I think people were awaiting you uh, you've made such a big impact on the construction tech space and the environment while you're with Built Worlds. Um, so yeah, congratulations and welcome back. Thank you. No, it, it's exciting to be back. It was, um, you know, I had left, I had done, uh, I had worked with an individual named Brad Keywell for a little bit. We started, um, we started an entrepreneurial, an entrepreneurial endeavor outside of construction um, and actually the uh, tech education space. And, um, you know, it was a great experience, tried something new. Brad is, uh, Brad is a friend of mine for a while. And, um, you know, it was, uh, you know, while, while I was doing that, I, my passion and just in, interest really lied in the industry I love, which is, um, which is construction. And, uh, you know, ABC is an organization that I have had the pleasure of working with for, you know, for years, since about 2014 with Built Worlds. And the CEO, Mike Bellman, and I had, you know, had talked about on many occasions how technology impacts the entire construction industry and what it means for ABC members. And, um, you know, fast forward to coming back to the industry, this was the perfect role for me. Um, would it help? I, I don't know for the audience how many are familiar. Would it help to give you a little context on just who ABC is in general? Yeah, no, that definitely would. I think that is, um, I think this setting the context for some of the discussions around technology adoption across the industry. I think that'd be super helpful. So, um, so to give you some perspective, so ABC, we are, um, we're National Construction Industry Trade Association, of which there's many, I've, you know, at Built Worlds, we worked with a lot of associations, organizations, and ABC was one of the first we worked with. Um, so ABC has 21,000 members um, based on the merit shop philosophy. And what we're doing is we're helping our members develop people, win work, deliver work safely, and um, just make sure that they are, you know, they are in the best place possible to win work and do it the right way and keep the workers healthy and safe, like I said. So, um, you know, ABC um, in the, you know, in this role, um, technology, what, you know, technology here different from built world was an opportunity to, like I said, make the most impact. And what I'm going to be doing is spearheading efforts to just integrate construction technology and innovation in all, all aspects of ABC and their strategic initiatives. So it's not just construction technology, it's how does construction technology help the contractors, help within total human health, help with the moral class safety and help with workforce development. So 
you know, making it, making an impact in the industry I love. When I was looking to come back, there's no doubt this was the best opportunity to do that. So uh, one of the biggest differences here than maybe Built Worlds is that um, with ABC, most of our contractors are small to mid-sized contractors. So, you know, 80% of those contractors are looking at tech in a different way. And that tech adoption, taking just simple steps, not looking at what I might describe as some of the the fairy dust and wizardry type technologies is going to have the most impact. So, um, you know, that, I think that's one thing that's really important and just getting people to take step one, but then, um, you know, bringing about opportunities to try new technologies. Uh, I think that making this an easy segue for contractors to just try out new tech, get familiar with new tech and providing awareness and education is where um, my role is really going to help. But also, and this kind of goes back to what I did with Built World, working with the tech community. The tech community, while many are competitive, I have, um, you know, I was fortunate enough with Built Worlds where we were an agnostic community and bringing together venture capital, technology and industry and associations, working collaboratively to do what's best for the future of the industry. I'm doing the same thing. And, uh, you know, that does take all stakeholders. It is going back, bringing the tech community in to help ABC members and vice versa, hearing from all sides. Mm. So, yeah, that's, that's, that's great. Well, that's, that's super, uh, I think, relevant context. So for anyone who doesn't know, so Matt and I were former colleagues at Built Worlds. We're, if we're talking about Built Worlds too much, just, just let us know. <laughs> but this is, this is our past experience. Um, we had a lot of great experiences there and uh, we'll certainly cover uh, more kind of on that topic, but yeah, I mean, Matt, you know, kind of, kind of like, let's set a, let's set a state of the union. Like, you know, COVID's had a big impact on the, on the construction, on the construction space. Just want to briefly kind of hear how ABC is thinking about it, how you're thinking about it specifically affecting the construction industry. Yeah. And I think, um, so one, one thing to know, um, you know, it just, um, kind of uh, some, something that I learned uh, in joining ABC, 98% of the construction industry are companies of uh, less, uh, less than 100 people. So um, not something I had a lot of light on um, prior. But um, I think at a high level, the pandemic is really impacting the industry in many ways. So for ABC, safety is really paramount and in the very DNA of our members. Um, but from a, t you know, um, there's just, there's a lot going on. And I don't want to speculate because the industry is just being affected in so many ways. But from a technology perspective, companies are embracing new tech out of necessity. So I, I think that's really exciting in some ways. Mm -hmm. It's scary in others. But it's not as an added tool in your tool belt anymore. It's to help your bottom line and to help things move forward in unprecedented times. So, you know, some of the basic tools really include video conferencing, team messaging, screen sharing, file, file sharing applications. Um, paperless solutions and just technology to virtually train in an area that typically virtual training wasn't even thought about. Um, and then you look at things like job site monitoring and safety documentation. Um, so one of the things, ABC, we have put up more webinars for our members than ever before focused on coronavirus to provide resources for them to see all the different impacts and all the different ways that we can help yeah. be a resource for them. So, Actually, yeah. Sure. Curious, how many webinars did you all do pre-COVID, like in, like in total? Um, I would have to get back to you to that. Um, I'm still, you know, I'm still in my fifth week into <laughs> it. Um, but webinars are a key, yeah. are a key form of education. Okay. For yeah, yeah. I um, actually, I, I just was curious from a ballpark perspective, because I mean, I know you all do a lot of in-person events, and I didn't know how relevant the the virtual events had become yet. I I, I think. Um, not being able to answer that part of it, but what I could tell you is the coronavirus attendance, we have, we've hit maximum capacity for multiple webinars, um, which, it, which was, you know, from what I understand, not typical in the past. And I think that just shows the value we're bringing there. Yeah. And, and with technology, uh, the last webinar we did, for example, was focused on just those things. Um, how do you use things like Microsoft Teams? How do you use things like, like Google Suite? How do you use video conferencing? Why, why does that matter? But it's going to some of the basic technologies. And then on the, on the flip side of it, just to give you some perspective of things we're looking at, and I think something that the industry should look at as a whole, um, we are doing webinars on cybersecurity. Um, so that's something that we are focusing on doing a whole series of tech on because Zoom, 
I think if my, as many people have read, Zoom has uh, security issues. And, um, you know, I think a lot of these technologies and a lot of just different contractors, as they do things remotely, there are cyber, cyber threats that are different um, in ways people probably didn't look at before. Mm -hmm. um, we are also looking at, we're doing a webinar on what are safety technologies um, that are going to help you when you go back to the job site, but also how are you doing safety training going to the job site. And then um, the other thing we uh, we focused on in our last webinar was what are some intuitive technologies that impact your bottom line immediately? So people are going to be running on really thin, you know, and just like they need to get their revenues back up. So a simple solution, for example, is we went over timesheets to digitize your timesheets of which there's many solutions. That is something that most companies can incorporate without an overabundance of education and something I think that is, um, you know, that's a real value. But uh, intuitive technologies that impact your bottom line is something that is a big focus. Yeah, no, definitely. And, you know, you kind of, you, you gave a little bit of context on the types of members that you have um, within the ABC, you know, and, and you made a reference to like, we're not, you guys aren't touching the, 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 fairy, the fairy dust things, the drones, the AI, um, some, of the, some of the more advanced technologies that the commercial construction players are looking at. Can, can you just back up a step and kind of give us like, you know, what, what is, what is uh, in terms of easy onboarding and frictionless, and, and frictionless adoption from a tech perspective, what are your like low level recommendations for, for a contractor that's just getting started? And, and also like, just do you mind sharing a little bit about the, uh, the size of the contractor that you're typically working with? Yeah, um, you know, I think that, um, you know, 80% of our contractors, like I said, are, are mid to small size contractors. And we, you know, we have a lot of those contractors that are 100 people or less. We also have many big contractors. So we are still looking at the advanced technologies because we do want to make people aware that some of the things like, um, like virtual reality and augmented reality might be used by 3% of the industry. But if it's being used in a, in a good way, and it's showing real impact, that will trickle down. So we are still, keep, still keeping people aware of that, but going back to some of the intuitive technologies, um, a lot of these smaller companies, they don't have CIOs, they don't, uh, they don't have CTOs. So um, I think that we are teaching, uh, one of the things I'm working on is teaching culture, embra embracing tech. Um, you know, timesheets, like I said, is an important thing. Um, right now, as it relates to COVID, you know, talking about Zoom, Talk, talking about things like timesheets when you go back on the job site, um, talking about things like um, job site security. So right now, many job sites, um, you know, maybe some of them are vacant in some areas, they're not working on them. So what are some solutions to make sure that your job is safe if there's not people on there? Because that's a different solution than making sure the right people are going, are going on your job. So, you know, there's, um, there's different solutions for, you know, for that, that I think people should, uh, should be aware of. But to your point on, on intuitive technologies, making things paperless, um, making collaboration simplified, and even things as basic as a CRM. I, I have seen a lot of companies where, um, you know, the, C, the CRM is something where the CEO, it might be his inbox, um, but to get in, implementing something like a HubSpot or a Salesforce is gonna ult, you know, ultimately help your business. So I think there are um, little things like that. I don't know if that, does that kind of answer what you were, what you were looking yeah. at? No, it, it does. And I think like, you know, for, for the people kind of showing up and, you know, who are kind of on the more the bleeding edge of, of emerging tech and construction, you know, I think it's important to point out like a lot of, con like a lot of contractors just aren't there yet. And the types of, the types of contractors you're dealing with, um, you know, some of that stuff won't apply to them for 10, for 10 to 20 years. Like, I mean, how many, how many contractors within the ABC are going to be concerned about drones in the, in the near future? I, I think, you know, drones is interesting because there is a safety component to it, but uh, we are going to have more impact on, um, you know, if you have, you know, um, right now, just to give you an idea, breakdown of ABC contractors, you have about 26% general contractors, 18% electrical, 11% mechanical at a high level, but drones, um, Drones are going to play a role at a very small percentage, um, but that said, and I think that's going to play more on a safety perspective. I do think that there are solutions like open open space that allow you to monitor your job site remotely that do play a role. Yeah. Um, 
drones, um, because you know, right now, drone companies, quite honestly, many of them have ceased to exist because to teach someone to fly a drone, um, there, there's a lot there to implement. It does take some education and there's a lot of onboarding. So there are other intuitive solutions that sometimes solve the problem that drones do. Um, but that said, there are some job sites that do that do require it because of just the complications of getting to certain areas. Yeah. So, so you mentioned open space. Yeah. Um, kind of, I kind of want to go down that path. Like what yeah. other technologies uh, in specific companies do you think are well positioned for, for the COVID environment? And, you know, look, look, looking at, I look, I look at open space as a, as a resilient, a resilient technology that is helping um, is helping contractors, is helping, is helping construction firms uh, figure out this transition to virtual. Uh, for those who don't know, open space does photogrammetry, uh, real-time visual, visual, visualization of, of kind of the project and uh, helps you track day-to-day -day, um, through, fo through photos what is, what is happening and uh, doesn't, you know, doesn't rely on like intense surveys, you don't have to actually go on job walks. Uh, makes that whole process a lot easier for the project managers and the, and the people in the corporate office. So, yeah, I mean, just along those lines, what, what other resilient technologies are out there that are potentially helping out in the COVID environment? I think what you're seeing, I think on one end, you have companies, a couple, for example, that have done really well in repositioning their technology um, given the current environment. So a great example is uh, SmartVid is a safety technology solution that uses artificial intelligence to identify how many people on a job site are actually within OSHA guidance based on, um, uh, based on the safety gear that they're wearing. Well, what they've done is they have now made it so their, their AI technology can detect if people are in fact six feet away from each other to, um, to actually make sure that social distancing is taking place. And one of the things that, um, you know, that they're looking at in the future is, uh, you know, are people wearing masks on the job site? Mm -hmm. So as far as pivoting, what is an amazing solution? Um, they've done a great job with that. Um, separately, Rumbix, who is focused on workforce productivity, they have actually created a function in there for, um, you know, for COVID-19 to actually document, do you have a change in health? Has your temperature risen? Do you have COVID? And it's just making sure that all the documentation for anything COVID related is there. Because if someone goes on a job site and does get infected with the disease, you can see how many people were actually within that person's area, how many people might be affected and just keeping everything documented really helps. Yeah. So I, I think that is one component of it. And there are other companies doing that, but people just adopting to the situation is, um, is happening right now. And then, you know, groups like Open Space that have remote job site monitoring, um, that is becoming really popular. Another group, Hollow Builder, is doing something similar mm -hmm. with job site monitoring. Um, so I, I think that that is kind of a pro side of it. But, you know, not to be fooled, like the economy, the economy is in a place where companies are struggling. And many of the tech companies in construction tech have, um, they have had to make some tough decisions, make some firings, and uh, raising money has become difficult. So I, I think that, um, you know, there is some positive stories, but unfortunately there, um, you know, it is making it for a tougher environment and, you know, that goes to raising money. Yeah. But I think people need to be creative, especially um, construction tech startups need to be creative about biz dev efforts because some people who might have extra free time on their hands um, to talk to might be there. So I think upping your biz dev efforts, um, there's still a value. Looking at partnerships, whether it's us or, other associations or other organizations that, you know, get creative with your partnerships if you have time. I mean, there's ways to do more with less. And I think one of the things that I found is that you can partner with a whole slew of companies, but no one takes down this industry by themselves. Whether you are integrating with a large group like Autodesk's Connect and Construct or Procore's Marketplace or partnering with associations, um, getting creative with your partnerships can go a long way if you figure out who the right partners are. Mm. And companies need to get a little creative about that. And, um, you know, if you're, if you have to fire people and lose a little bit of your workforce, look into how you can do more with marketing. Um, many people are by their computers right now. How can you, how can you do sales from a marketing perspective? And yeah, like so, I said, be creative. Yeah. So if you're a construction tech founder and, and let's say your, your solution isn't, isn't super well positioned for this, um, 
maybe maybe you rely on being on the on the job site, right? How, how are you how are you thinking about addressing short term cash flow issues with focus on the core business? Do you think there's actually a pretty strong necessity that to create a a, a short term virtual solution? Do you need to do you need to pivot some aspect of the effort? Um, to to accommodate COVID, like how, how do you think about that as a founder? I think it depends on the I think it depends on the business. Um, you know, for example, if um, you know if you are a company that needs that needs to be on the job site and you have some of those capabilities and um, and the tech expertise to do something that is virtual, I th I think you do need to look into that. Um, but if you're someone who doesn't have that capability and you don't have the engineers to build that solution then um, I think it just go back, goes back to my point before in that you need to really get creative with your biz dev efforts and your partnerships and find a way, maybe you partner with someone who does have a virtual solution and you add on to make their solution stronger. But I think, you, I think this is a time where you have to think outside of the box. Uh, and if you're, a, if you're a company that has you know, a venture group that has invested in you who has, um, who has connections or can provide help, I mean, look to your advisors. A lot of these companies have great have great advisors, and some of the groups don't um, don't use that expertise as much as um, as much as they can. Um, but I, you know, and also I think you know because of right now, construction tech companies, the money going into construction tech was was at a peak. I mean, I've never seen so much money going into construction tech before, and you know some of those groups are going to be a little hesitant to um, to get back into it. But I do think that construction tech is still strong. And I do think that building those relationships, while you not get, might not get money today or in the next couple months, to build those relationships with the venture community uh, is still important. But if you know family offices and find, have other ways to raise money, um, I think it's worth looking at those. Um, mm -hmm. You work with groups like, um, like for example, uh, Shadow Ventures. I know that a lot, of, a lot of groups that you have, you guys have not only given advice to, you, you invest in some of those companies, but you provide a roadmap on how they're going to be successful. And, you know, there's a few groups who do that. Um, and you guys have an expertise in this space. I think Dream It Ventures is one of those groups, but there's only a handful of groups that are going to actually help you yeah. in the early stages, educate you on how are you success, successful from start to finish. And some groups are just going to give you money. So I think you need to be aware of um, what, is it, what it is that you want as a construction tech company. Mm -hmm. You know, one of, one of the questions that we've had people ask, you know, mainly, mainly founders who are raising money currently, how, how does a, you know, how does a mainstream investor who, who's not a, you know, who doesn't have a, a sector expertise like shadow uh, where we're, we're kind of focused and hone in and committed and committed to investing in this space. How do you, how do you have that conversation with a mainstream investor who kind of isn't investing in tech broadly and they look at you in construction and they say like construction may or may not see a big construction contraction or recession coming um and you know how do you how do you attract them as an investor and basically like quell a lot of their concerns that investing in this in this sector right now is is going to be a is going to be a tough challenge um especially from a, a tech adoption perspective even if like you know for instance if if we're not able to access the job site and even ad adopt from a you know uh what you know if we're not able to to pursue tech adoption at the scale that we need to when the job site is full. Um, how do you think that that progresses when we have limited access to the job site? I think, and I don't know if this answers your question, but I think one of the important things is if, if an investor is not in specifically in the construction space, partnering with big companies or partnering with big organizations is going to help because now that opens to eyes, there's something they may be aware of, but also looking at the construction tech space over the last two years, I mean, we just talked about open space. They raised $14 million in the last couple of years. You have Autodesk who's bought multiple companies, including Building Connected and Plan Grid and Assemble. Um, the acquisitions that are taking place and the amount of money being invested there um, is so extreme. That's not going to just completely disappear because yeah. there is an interest in this space. Yeah. I think to point those investors to those, you know, to those numbers and uh, to show them that these are the big players, we've partnered with at least a couple of them if you can, if you can show them that story and you can show them, I mean, until COVID construction was at, I mean, really a, an amazing pace mm -hmm. and to show them that there is confidence in the industry and what's happened. I think they're, you know, I think they're going to be interested. Um, yeah. It, it, it seems like the answer is, you know, Hey, it's a, it, this is a, this is a, sh a short term 
uh, a short term thing, right? Like if you if you point if you look at if you look at decades or five to ten year periods versus you know one to two year contractions, you see the bigger picture and you see the growth from a from a tech investment perspective that's coming into the space. And and just because there's a macroeconomical event that is significant doesn't mean that we're going to change um, you know every single thing about how we're how we're adopting tech throughout the industry, right? These things, you know, there was, there was a significant amount of tech adoption occurring because it needed to occur, right? And I would argue actually that a recession in this industry, uh, you know, it's very, it's very hard to convince, to convince someone, especially in an anti antiquated industry, um, that change is good and change is necessary when everything is booming, right? So when investments coming in, when their business, when their bottom lines are great, when their businesses are fantastic, like why do they need to change anything? Why do they, why do they need to adopt tech? And I think that now more than ever, you're going to see you're going to see investors and you're going to see you're going to see AEC businesses look at their bottom line and say like, man, how do I get more efficient? How do I get more margins out of out of my business? And technology is is an answer and, and a way to do that. Well, I also think. Um, some of the investors, they were, um, there were some evaluations that were pretty extreme. And I think investors can look to this and, and they can see, you know, getting into a company at, at a better price point, just because of what, of what has gone on. They might get a, they might get a better valuation for them, but you can point to this being an adoption point that people aren't forced to do this. But if you look at the state of the industry, when, um, so Built Worlds in 2015, uh, we hosted a CEO summit. In 2015, bringing together founders of tech companies and CEOs of construction companies was a foreign concept. If you look at today, the amount of tech conferences come spreading almost on a weekly basis, you could travel the road to see all of them. And I think you can point to that to see, hey, adoption's happening. Look at all these businesses that are, you know, that are focused on construction tech. Um, so I, you know, I think that just adds to it. And those aren't going away while they might not be able to physically have those events. Um, the fact that the enthusiasm and awareness is at such a level that never existed before, that's the, that's the proof in the pudding. Yeah. And they're still doing digital events, even though if they can't do it in person. Yeah. I, I think that, I think that's a great, a great segue um, coming off you talking about events. Curious, how, how do you see the, I mean, the, the ev events are actually, I think one way that as an industry, we've, we've grown brand awareness for what we're doing and, uh, specifically, founders have actually been able to sell and get in front of customers. With for the foreseeable future, like we're not going to be doing any, you know, any major gatherings uh, of of construction tech folks. How do you how do you see the event landscape kind of kind of shaping out and shifting coming out of COVID? I think one thing to note that that is unfortunate. I do believe even in especially in the tech space for this industry. Construction is an industry where the value of actually being face to face with someone is so important. The vet, like I, I can tell you firsthand, the relationships that were strongest at Built Worlds, whether it was a industry association or tech, were the ones that were made in what I describe as hand to hand combat, just you know face to face meetings with people. So I, I think there's a big value there. But you're getting something similar out of video conferencing. The conferences taking place. Um, Many of them are, are being canceled. I mean, you know, I look at, um, I look at some of the big industry tech events like um, Groundbreak and Autodesk University. I think they're still an unknown if they're going to take place. Uh, I, I hope they do. I think they're huge events for the industry. They bring thousands of people together. Uh, I think Autodesk University is more than 10,000 people. And I think Procore is over 5,000 people. Um, so th both of those events I don't know if they're going to happen, but if you look at things that are two, three months out, they're being canceled. And, you know, like I said before, like it's a very unknown area, but I think that a lot of these conferences are going to start doing things that are more digital. And, um, you know, that's the, that is the state of the world. I think webinars are going to be more commonplace. And a lot of these events are going to go there. If they don't take place in person, they're, they're going to be more webinars and there's going to be more zoom type meetings like this. Um, it's, uh, it's really is uncharted territory. Yeah. Um, the organization, the organizational events um, across the industry at large, you're, I mean, you're seeing this too. And it's really, like I said, it's really unfortunate in an industry that just the face-to-face -face is so important. 
yeah. built worlds. Um, I got into, I got new events in 2014 because someone said, this is great that you're writing about all these technologies, but we want to hear from and see these people in person. Our first event probably had, I don't know, 30 people and, and that grew, but I instantly saw the value of uh, the face-to-face -face meetings. I mean, don't, don't you think though, don't you think though that we have the, we have the capacity, you know, as, uh, as, as individuals, as business people. And, you know, we have, the, we have the virtual tools now to, to do a lot of that conversing virtually, right? Like, yeah, I'm not in person with you right now, but um, video is like, you know, with, with platforms like Zoom, like, yeah, I, I feel like I'm able, you know, I'm able to connect with who I need to connect with and have a yeah. real discussion. Now, granted, I don't know if I'm a, you know, if I'm a, a major contractor talking to a startup about a hundred thousand dollar deal and I don't know who they are. I don't know their business. They've been, a, they've been in business for a year. Like, am I signing that contract virtually? I can't say that I am. Right. Um, and, and, and look, I'll say the same thing about, about shadow. Like we're now faced with the task. We're looking at doing a few deals right now. Uh, and you know, from an investment perspective and, there's going to be situations where we may not be able to, to meet a founder in person before we write a check. And we have to decide as a, as a firm if we're comfortable with that. And I think at some point though, like you're going to have to continue business as usual and you have to decide yeah. like, Hey, we have enough, we have enough to go off of here. Maybe we need to take a leap of faith to actually progress things. You know, we can get creative with contract terms, put some protection in place. Right. But I think at, at some point, like we, we all, we all need to like, at least my belief, we all need to have a leap of faith in the tools that we have now and actually go out and, 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 and start actually, you know, doing deals, pursuing activities that, that we can pursue. Um, but maybe that are a little uncomfortable because of what we got, had used, what we were used to with in-person events and doing in-person deals. Yeah. I, I think I, I would tell you, if you get a zoom meeting, do it in video. I mean, really, in this day and age, um, because the face-to-face -face is the close, the I'm sorry, the video conference is the closest thing from a face-to-face -face meeting. I, you know, I personally believe that you connect with someone more if you're on a video conference. And I will tell you, most of my conferences, people are on t-shirts. You'd never see them wear. It's kind of funny, but like, it, embrace it. Um, it. It really does create value um, in having a, a Zoom conference meeting more than a phone call. And I know some people are just dialing in the number that you see in the Zoom conference to the video conference. I mean, I, I like that is the best advice I can give from just a, a biz dev perspective or just connecting with people, the industry in this new age, like that is something worth embracing. Um, there's, a, there's a place for Slack. There's a place for, you know, a lot of these collaboration tools. But if you're setting up a meeting, try to embrace these technologies and something that would have been a phone call before, take it as a zoom conference, do something you wouldn't before and make that connection because mm -hmm. you might not be, you know, you might not see them in person for six months, eight months. I mean, we don't know. For but sure. Yeah. That's, that's my biggest advice. And just like, you know, if it's a step out of your comfort zone, embrace it. You know, you're still in your home. You be in sandals and a t-shirt. Everything's <laughs> acceptable these days <laughs> on the conference calls. Pretend, pretend uh, we're on the beach. Even on even on cold days here in Chicago, hopefully hopefully ending soon. But <laughs> um, yeah, anyway, that, that would be that would be my take on that. Um, like I said, it, it is uh, it's unfortunate. Um, I, I will tell you personally, like I, I enjoy going to those events um, because I came back to the industry. Uh, one of the things I'm excited about is to reconnect with a lot of the the people that I did a lot of work with. So now I'm video conferencing with them as opposed to seeing them in person, and it's just um, you know. Again, it's like I, I was talking before with uh, with the young tech companies. Just you know, embrace it, but be be creative. Mm -hmm. Embrace sure. the tech. So, um, and and by the way, this is uh, this is technically an AMA. I'm completely dominating the AMA right now, <laughs> um, but we have a lot of viewers here that uh, I think probably want to ask you some questions, Matt. So, yeah. um, feel feel free, everyone who's listening in, feel free to go ahead and put your questions in in the Q and A, and we'll make sure to uh, to try to get try to get to them. I got uh, a couple here. I, I see. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. And I, I can, I can do these. So, um, so someone asked, can, can tech startups join, um, you know, ABC? So, uh, what I would tell you is yes. Uh, so ABC where, where it's set up, if you are a technology company, for example, um, you can join, you can join ABC. Um, you can, you can contact me directly and I can help figure out, you know, if it makes sense to, 
join a chapter specifically, or if you're a technology company and want to and want to join ABC, we are building we are building out a tech alliance. Um, you know, I said before we are collaborating with the technology community, and we uh, we're working with a select um, a select group of tech companies that are going to help us with the ABC tech effort. That is going to come across many you know many roads um, from education to you know potentially doing some beta testing. But the goal is to work with the tech community. Um, it is going to be small at first, but there are two ways to get involved today. Um, the Tech Alliance is an exclusive group, so you would need to, um, you know, you would need to kind of pass a little, you know, a little bit of tests on, and I mean tests, there's just some thresholds and needs that we have from specific tech companies that are necessary in, um, you know, making our contractors adopt technologies, but also what makes sense. So that group is one thing that I can talk to you about and it has to add value to ABC members. Separately, any tech group, any tech company can join a local chapter. Um, and if you, if you have offices in three different areas, then we can help, you know, you can join three different chapters, but um, a lot of the information's online or I can help you. So if you're, um, you know, if you're a specialty contractor or supplier, um, you know, again, just joining at a local level is, is the best way to do that. And you can reach out to me for more details on that. But um, the Tech Alliance is something that is new that we we're putting out. Um, and if you wanna inquire, you can reach me. So um, the next question, which technologies do you think will have a big impact during the crisis? And which are the ones that will be key after COVID in the new normal? I, I talked about this a little bit before, but um, technologies that will have a big impact during the crisis. Uh, going back to um, some of the things I mentioned before, I think, Technology aside, I think leadership is going to be key. I think you need to, from a top-down approach, make sure that the entire that your entire organization company is embracing tech. I think the most important technologies are going to be, on one hand, collaboration tools. Uh, I think that the best two for those are going to be um, Microsoft Microsoft Teams and Slack, from just a simple you know texting and messaging perspective. For video conferencing, I think WebEx and Zoom are going to be great. Are going to be great ones to embrace uh, during the you know during this process. And then uh, document sharing, so you know SharePoint or Dropbox are are great tools for that. I think those are three key technologies that are going to help during the crisis. Now, if you look at um, what is going to be key after you know after the crisis, um, you know I I tend to believe personally, and I just see this in job sites digitizing timesheets. That is going to be um, one of the most important things. If you digitize your timesheets, most companies aren't doing it, especially the smaller companies. I think that's, I think that's going to play a big role. Um, and making, a, making your job site paperless. So looking at solutions like Ignite or Struction Site, um, you know, Carl Sorensen talked about this in our previous webinar. Those companies have free trials. So you can try these things out for free for a period. But I think those are, you know, those are two types of technologies that are going to be key in the new normal. Um, and then, you know, just as a, from a safe from a safety perspective, um, one thing that we're seeing now is that a lot of the, and this is not just for after COVID. I think this is just important. Um, there are a lot of tools that are out there right now that are focused on uh, worker safety that are just really impressive. So if you hold a tool. At, uh, at a certain angle, it will stop because uh, it'll stop in just understanding where you may have an accident. So it's preventing acute injuries on job sites and, you know, companies like Milwaukee Tool and DeWalt are, are solving some of those problems. For sure. Um, so yeah, so anyway, that's a little, little insight there. Yeah, no, that's, that's great. So um, as we wait for more questions to roll in, and as you have those, um, feel free to put them in the chat. Someone just put a question in, but I'm going to steal this time right now. Yeah. Uh, we, we talked a little bit when we spoke on the phone yesterday about fundraising during this time. Yeah. Uh, if, if you're a startup and you've advised a lot of construction tech startups uh, kind of in the fundraising game and just, you know, what are your, what is, what's some of your advice on how to, how to actually raise money in the current times? I, I will tell you as, as a whole, you know, whether COVID-19 or not, fundraising is tough. Uh, many businesses who are out fundraising, it, it does hurt their business because typically you are having a founder, a CEO, or even two co-founders going out to raise money. It is tough. It is something that takes, you know, the full time and effort of your day. 
It takes a lot of traveling, much of the time to the coast, going to New York and San Francisco. It is a tough thing to do. If you can, if your advisors can help with that, take them on it. If you're, mm. if you're looking to, um, you know, I, I will tell you, there's a couple of companies who have said, I'm so far along with this group, we're good, the money's in the bank, and then it just falls apart at the end. Make sure that you are just, you, you can't have all your eggs in one basket. Um, corporate venture firms tend to, you know, they tend to work slow. Venture capital groups, a lot of them are doing a lot of due diligence. It takes time and uh, you, you can't give enough, um, you, you can't give enough presentations to venture groups to raise money because until that money is actually in the bank, you need to go full throttle at that. And during a time like what we're dealing with right now, um, I think that there is passive dollars out there. There are family offices that are, you know, that are active. I mean, I know a handful of family offices that are, you know, investing in companies. They're getting creative and doing, you know, um, different types of, of debt notes. And, you know, the pros and cons of that are on the pro because they're passive, they might not be down, you know, down your neck saying, oh, you didn't create that. You didn't create these sales or you didn't do this. Um, you know, so, you know, they might not be down your neck, but the venture capital firms on the other side, if you go with the family office, the value they bring is not going to be helpful, but you know, for someone that needs, that has cash flow issues, mm -hmm. looking at that passive money that might not be a, strate a strategic help is worth exploring. Yeah. I mean, I, I would say, I would add, I think those are great points. I would ask, add this too. Like you look at most venture capital firms that have raised, that have raised money in the last two years, most of their, most of their capital is still dry powder. Um, so they have, they have money. And I think kind of as I've had conversations with other VCs and I know our own internal stance um, and you just kind of look and, and read, read and research and data points throughout the industry, um, people are willing to invest. However, we're, VCs are going to be much more selective with what deals they choose to do at this time. And, and, and think about it, like we as a, as a venture firm, we have a fiduciary duty to our investors and this current environment is so uncertain right now that to, to make an investment, we have to be very, very convicted that this is going to be investment that our cat, that the cash flow that we decide to give you the capital we give you um, is not going to burn too quickly uh, that it's going to go to the right things that it's, you know, that it's going to, to lead to, to future, future sales that are going to, allow you to get to your series a to your series b and a lot of a, a lot of that predictive uh, a lot of those predictive metrics that we would look at like those are becoming super murky and so just I, I would say as a founder approach it you know we are still willing to invest we we are we are excited about about doing deals but we have to look at it through a more careful lens because we owe we have fiduciary duty and we owe that to our lps um, so as many deals as we'd like to do, because they're, it's quite an advantageous deal environment right now. Um, it's, it's just hard to, it's hard to make the case for it. And it's hard to justify like, Hey, I believe this, you know, this startup is going to hit these metrics in, in 12 and 24 months. Um, because frankly, we just, we can't really predict that at this time. It's, it's, it's highly uncertain. Yeah. And, but, but, and, and you kind of highlighted one of the things I, I was mentioning is that, um, they'll still be active because you have favorable terms, but at the same time, the guys who, you know, the guys who you have that responsibility to, there's no doubt they're going to be having a closer eye on these things. But um, for shadow, I mean, one thing that you guys have done is you have an accelerator program. So, you know, as far as helping a company get to that point, even if you're not the investor, you can help be a resource for them um, sure. to yeah. raise money. Um, so Anyway, I think, uh, I, I think that, you know, I think group, like I said, groups like yours, there's a real help for that. Um, uh, one of the things I was going to add, so someone asked the question about what do you think about cash flow, the cash flow power of contractors in the short term? Uh, I think, you know, an important thing to note, so I, I just learned this stat yesterday. As of April 13th, 14% of the Paycheck Protection Program loans were construction industry loans. And that goes 14%. 14%. And that goes to my point before that 98% of contractors have a hundred people or less. So um, you do have a lot of, uh, you've got a lot of construction companies on the smaller side that, you know, that are using that. Um, 
but yeah, um, you know, the, in the short term, a lot of them are, are having some troubles, but as a start, as a construction startup founder, um, how does it, how does it affect your cash flow? I think it affects every startup differently, depending on what the startup is. Like, it, you know, like I talked about early on, these startup companies that were, um, you know, that have pivoted properly, they've actually done better than they have before with less resources. But I think you just have, you just have to be creative because if you can show a construction company that you're going to help their cash flow in a time that maybe it's not as certain as it was two months ago. Um, I, I think they'll be, I think they'll be interested in hearing what you have to say. And some companies and contractors have, you know, more time than they might have had three months ago. Mm. So you might, you might be, you might have the ability to have a conversation that you never would have had two months ago. I think that's a, that's a great point. One thing I will say is I have not had uh, any difficulty finding time to connect to connect with startups or, or entrepreneurs. Um, also from my perspective, like shadow is kind of at the, we're at the end of a fundraise um, for, our, for our own fund and the investors that we were trying to get a hold of and trying, trying to court, if you will, uh, we haven't had a tough time getting in front of them either. Like every, we know, we know where everyone is. Everyone's at home in front of their computer and there's no, there's no hiding that there's no, there's literally nowhere to hide. There's nowhere to go. Um, it's your job as a, as a, you know, as a, as a founder to, to make the play and, and essentially get in front of that person and, and present them with, with what you got. And look, in a lot of cases, like, all I want to know is that, you know, you can solve my problem, right? So we all have problems right now, very specific problems that have, that have come up of recent. And if you can help me uh, in some way and, and add value in some way, even if it's not directly related to your business, I'm, will, I'm willing to chat with you, right? But the bottom, the bottom lines for people, um, it's so critical that they, that they stay in the black. If you can help them even a little bit, people are going to listen to you. A a absolutely. More than ever. So, like, so even if it's not directly pitching your business, one, one thing I, I, I tell founders we're working with is like, just, yeah, I mean, ma make an introduction that makes sense. Um, you know, go, go out of your way to send them a resource, to send them an article link that they, that they might find relevant or might be educational to them during this time. Um, those small little things that they're actually, if they're actually thoughtful, um, and it proves to me that you've actually, you actually know my experience and are kind of understanding and thinking about me, me specifically, like that is, I mean, that stuff is gold. Um, it, 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 re it really, really works. And it's not something that's super scalable, but sometimes doing things that aren't scalable is, is really how you get leverage. Um, so I highly recommend that. Um, so yeah, Matt, well, uh, I, think I don't have any more questions. Out of but questions anything else, yeah. anything I, else that you want to, I don't know, that you want to cover? Yeah. So I, I had a couple of questions I wrote down as you were chatting, as you were chatting. Um, your kind of your role here at ABC now is, is, heavy in the education front. Yeah. Um, and I kind of wanted to, to dig into how you're, how you're planning uh, to go about educating. Um, I think education from a technology perspective across the industry is something that's, that's super important. And j I, I just frankly wanted to hear your approach. Like, what are you planning on doing? Uh, how do you get through to people um, and basically convince them that technology is not a hindrance and not something that's going to add difficulty to, to their life? Um, but actually something that's going to be a huge benefit. I think with, uh, with my role with, with ABC, um, I, I mentioned this before, one of the webinars is definitely going to be one of the key ways we educate because we have 69 chapters across the U.S. and those chapters are very involved with the webinar. So educating from that front is going to be key. And we're going to focus on, you know, mostly technologies that are intuitive and that you can adopt, but we're also going to make people aware because one of the things we're doing, and this is for ABC and for the industry, and for the industry, is to build enthusiasm and awareness around technology. So, the webinars are key. Um, also, I am working with all the different chapters um, to just incorporate technology as um, as a way to educate their contractors and members. Um, we have had we've had a few of our uh, of our chapters actually put together local technology events. So, um, you know, those have been very successful. So we can see that there is an excitement and enthusiasm for it. So what I'm trying to do is, and I think this was, you know, a little bit of what we did at Built World, 
Making technology digestible for people is one of the things that uh, we're trying to solve for our 21,000 contractors. Because if you go on Google, you're just gonna find who spent the most money on ads. So making it digestible, making it actionable, and um, showing people the proof in the pudding. Um, so for example, when we do a webinar, um, I always like to at least hear from someone who used that, you know, who used a specific technology and, uh, you know, had positive impact for it. But um, it's going to be in that regard, we are going to, you know, um, building more um, for the organization, building reports for the organization, mm -hmm. um, you know, for us serving and understanding what do, what are people interested in, not interested in, and uh, where, you know, where do the problems lie? What can we what can we solve to be most impactful for our members and and ultimately the industry? But um, you know we uh, and then we work closely with uh, construction executive as well. So um, you know I think those are the, those are the ways that we're educating. That's great. And we're we are growing upon that, but um, it is a mix of digital and physical education. I think that there's improvement for many, many organizations to, you know, a lot of these organizations have different chapters and I think technology is slowly becoming more of a, you know, more of a part of that, but um, we're getting out of the old school. Um, I don't know, some of the same technology is still new for most uh, organizations and chapters. So like I said, we're trying to do it physically, digitally and come at multiple fronts and show a uh, proof of concept, but uh, most importantly is adoption. So, um, ABC uh, wants technology, you know, we want technology to be one of the key pillars with an ABC. That's only going to happen after adoption takes place at a big level. So the mm -hmm. education um, needs to actually have real adoption after it. Yeah, that, that, second, that second part is, I think, uh, if, you can, if you can figure out that hack, you've kind of, um, you're, you're in, you're in a good spot. I think you've like kind of nailed education. That's the homework aspect has always been the hardest part. Um, getting people excited to, to go out and like do their own research, be curious about it. Um, yeah, d definitely keep us posted on how, on how that's going. And, um, yeah, ho hopefully you, you can kind of track some good progress there. I think, I mean, look, the, the work that you're doing is so important. So again, like super excited that you're back in the industry and, um, you've, you've, ta you've taken on the endeavor. Um, so I, I had two final questions for you. One, uh, to go back down memory lane, you were a co-founder of, of Built Worlds, as I mentioned. Um, what would you say you're most proud of uh, out, of that, out of that experience and um, in, in building what Built Worlds became? Uh, definitely the CEO Summit. Um, we, um, you know, putting together in 2015, I mentioned this a little bit, putting together a summit that was just CEOs, founders, and presidents, where we had a stage that we put together CEOs of groups. Um, I, I'll give you a perfect example. We, we put tech founders together with construction, with construction presidents and organizational leaders. And if I look back, the first panel we ever held included um, Sean McGuire of the MCAA, who ran their, techno who ran their technology mm -hmm. effort. We had Zach Scheel of Rumbix. We had, and we had Amir, we had Amir Rubin um, he, of Paracosm. Now, looking back, the technology effort for the MCA ha has grown a ton. Zach Scheel has raised a lot of money and his business has grown immensely. He started, his business started around the same time as Built World. And Amir Rubin sold his company um, to a company called Occipital and he, did, he made out very well. And there's a lot, there is a lot of those stories but looking back, uh, going back to what we talked about of it being an industry that is really, you know, um, just heavy on people to people connections, the amount of business and partnerships and uh, um, I mean, even investments that came from that CEO summit, which still exists today, um, it is just unbelievable. Uh, we've, we did something in the industry that now uh, I think many people are replicating and it is still working, but putting together tech industry and all the stakeholders together, including the venture community. Um, Gabe Greenbaum of the Pritzker Group spoke at that first summit. Yeah. And now, um, if you look around the industry, there are a lot of Shark Tank type events um, for association events, for um, big tech events that are taking place. So I think what we started with that summit of bringing all these types of stakeholders together, um, I'm proud of because not only has that gone um, in a big way and spread to the rest of the industry, that CEO Summit is uh, still a growing endeavor within, uh, within Built Worlds. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. On that, um, 
on that note, we're this is a, a little bit of a teaser, but I see Brian Sayer is on the call from Shadow's team, and he's been coordinating a a secret behind the scenes effort to do um, a pretty robust virtual event here in the short term. So we're it involves startups, it, it involves investors, uh, it involves some executives from throughout the industry. So stay stay tuned on that. I, I think say. getting all stakeholders together gives real perspective and just it helps everyone. But there, there's a real, there is a real value in that, and real um, opportunities in business take place from those the types of things. For sure. All right. So, last question. You ready? I'm ready. Shoot. What are you most looking forward to after quarantine? Going to the gym. Really? 100% going to the gym. See, my, my take on the gym is the gym is like the quintessential cesspool of germs. Like if you want to go get coronavirus, you go to the gym. I am, uh, I, many, people, <laughs> many people have worked out more than they ever had being quarantined. And I have, tr I have tried, I have worked out with my wife and I have done yoga and I've yeah. played more colorful weights than I ever have with the two and four pounders. And, uh, um, you know, I, I'm on all videos of all kinds I never thought I would explore, but I miss the gym. I, I am a gym I get person, it. and uh, I can't run as much. I used, I ran six marathons and I have no cartilage in my knees anymore. So running outside is not as exciting as it used to be. I, I hear you. Hey, running, running can get old fast. Um, okay, cool. Well, so a couple minutes left. Do you have any parting, parting words for the audience? Um, anything you'd like to say to, to startup founders in the space or any industry people who are looking to learn more about what you're doing? Uh, so, you know, I, I think I mentioned in the beginning, I mean, it is just amazing. I'm, a, I'm in a spot that I'm just, I honestly, I'm just, I, I'm really just honored to have it because I'm in a position where I can create such a big impact. But um, if there are tech founders that I can help, um, you know, Helping, helping the industry is not just the contractors, is the technology companies involved in the industry. I, maybe I don't have the answer, but there's a good chance I might be able to connect you to someone who does. Please reach out. I love helping this industry. I think, Nick, you know better than anybody, like just half of my time at Built Worlds and a lot, you know, is just connecting people. And that's just a hobby of mine. I like connecting people to help the industry. I'm in a position to do that. I, I love it. And anything I can do to help, I just gave my, um, my email contact information. Um, so anybody who wants to reach out, please do. Um, but my part words, I'm just, I'm excited to be back in the industry. Um, it is, uh, it is a crazy time. And I started March 9th when this all really got bad, yeah. yeah. but I really couldn't be more excited. I think that we, you know, the industry, like many other industries uh, will get back on track eventually. And I'm just, like I said, I'm excited to make an impact and anybody who um, I can help or wants to reach out, I'll, I'll make time for them. And just thank you very much for having me. Um, and if anybody's here who isn't familiar with Shadow, they're a phenomenal, phenomenal group. I've, uh, I've worked with um, you know, Nick and KP for years and what they've done to help young startup tech companies and you know, mid-sized tech companies in this industry and other industries is amazing. Um, so I'm just, this is my first major speaking event since I've been at ABC. So I appreciate you guys having me. Um, think the world of what you're doing and any way I can help or support, um, let me know. Very cool. Appreciate, appreciate all the kind words, man. Well, it's been great having you. We'll have to do, um, we'll have to figure out how to get you, uh, get you in front of our, uh, our audience more often, our community. Um, I know we have our summit coming up in the fall. Hopefully we can get you down there if, if, if uh, we get the okay that in-person events are, are on, <laughs> but um, otherwise, we'll have to definitely get you back um, as you as you progress in the role. Um, this was this was great, Matt. Appreciate it. Appreciate the time, and thanks again. Yeah, thank you, and thank you everyone who came. Appreciate All it. All right, cheers. Take care.